Well, I always say a perfect day at Animal Kingdom starts with regret. <laughs> We're about to have the perfect day in two Disney parks to put the ultimate question to the test. Are Animal Kingdom and Epcot half day parks? Ah. Duh, duh, duh. There's my dramatic. I did a really off. good screaming face behind you, so it should it should It be should like, work. Duh. Cut, print, check the gate, living on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One thing about Animal Kingdom, it opens earlier than every other park. Yeah. 8 a.m. It opens at 8 a.m. And that means that if you're a resort guest, it opens at 7.30 a.m. And you know what time you have to leave anywhere to get anywhere in Disney World? Like an hour, 30 minutes to an hour before. So we're looking at 7, 6.30. Um, for the record, Stage and I are not warning people. No, no, no. But I will say, I tried my best. I went, I got, uh, I went, I arrived at your house at 20 minutes after I said I was, and then you <laughs> walked out 20, 20 minutes, minutes after, after I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are at Animal Kingdom now. We have missed the immediate rope drop. Rope drop kind of, that's the first few hours when the park opens. It kind of lasts for an hour or two, depending on the crowds in a day. So it's 8.30. We're going to go in and we're going to do our best. Because one thing about a perfect day, you regret. do your best. Oh, sorry. And regret. <laughs> <laughs> I have been here in the car while you were still getting ready, mm -hmm. booking lightning lanes. And, and so we do have plans. I think our first one drops in like... 15 minutes. You We're late! <laughs> you don't have to be in the park every hour that it's open. Have a perfect day. And that's what we're demonstrating. Regret! All right, we're, <laughs> we're starting our day here at Animal Kingdom where it's approximately, I'd imagine, 45 degrees. I can't feel my fingers. <laughs> and um, 45 degrees to people who live in Florida is about a nice 65. So yes. it's a beautiful day. We're just really cold. <laughs> All right, let's go get some coffee. Yeah, I think we need coffee. Yes, you too. So we're starting our day here in Disney's Animal Kingdom. This is uh, Disney's newest park, which isn't saying much. It opened in 98. Uh, it is an animal themed park. So it's got a ton of animal exhibits, uh, a focus on conservation and the natural environment. It is definitely one of my top two parks. This and Epcot are kind of tied for first until Epcot's construction is done. What? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, Epcot's my number one all time, but right now I like Animal Kingdom better because of the construction. Also, in all of my spiels, I have never thought to once call this the newest park. <laughs> it's because it's not new. Because <laughs> it's the perfect day. It is the perfect day. The perfect day starts with seeing Annie the anteater. She's sleeping, I bet. Everybody's pointing at her She's spot. probably chilly. I wish I was covered in anteater fur. <laughs> I wish I was covered in, in anteater. Oh, she's up. Well, this is a prime example about coming to Animal Kingdom, especially when it's cooler, because animals tend to be the most active uh, during cooler temperatures, especially first thing in the morning or later on in the evening. So Look at her little nose. Uh -huh. She's looking for ants. She's like up looking for snacks. Yeah. It's breakfast time. It is breakfast time. But Animal Kingdom does open earlier than the other parks, and that's because it closes earlier than the other parks year-round. That's to give the animals uh, kind of the environment that they need, make sure that there's not too much noise around the animals uh, in the evening. So when you get to Animal Kingdom, that's when the animals are going to be the most active if you get there early. That's why getting Animal Kingdom early is important. And this park, though it does have some really amazing rides, also has some absolutely unbelievable animal exhibits. And that's gonna be part of our focus today. Um, and that coupled with the fact that we have Genie Plus, Disney Skip the Line service, and got out of the house very late, is why we're not rushing to a ride right now. No. And are instead gonna enjoy some animals and some coffee. And some coffee, yeah. Also, it's cold. In a Disney park, there's two places that you can usually find coffee, either at Joffrey's Coffee and Tea or the Starbucks location in the park. In every other park, I'm a Joffrey's girl. In this park, Starbucks girl. I'm gonna say uh, 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 I see your every other park and I'll raise you two out of four. What's your other Starbucks park? I, I do like uh, the Red Trolley Car Cafe. I thought you were gonna say that in Hollywood Studios. In Hollywood Studios, yeah. Those are my two that I'll say it's okay to do the Starbucks location. Yeah. Uh, but the Main Street Bakery, Magic Kingdom, and uh, Connections Cafe in Epcot, the lines do are not far wait too in those long. Lines. It's not worth it. Yeah. Joffrey's coffee is really delicious, but um, I think that Starbucks does hot coffee a lot better. So we are headed to Creature Comforts, which is Animal Kingdom Starbucks location. Typically does not have a super long line for some reason, even though Starbucks and some of the other parks gets a crazy long line. 
We're gonna head in, grab our coffee of choice, and then probably look at the cutest monkeys you've ever seen in your life. Where you're gonna get the, where because Starbucks Ooh. makes the hot co a, better, a better hot coffee. Oh, should I get the co the flat white? Yeah, you know what? You can get it hot or iced. I did learn that because I prefer my coffee iced. Um, but it's the flat white, and you can actually support uh, cotton tops, which are uh, in the um, exhibit, I suppose, or the, the enclosure right outside of uh, Creature Comforts. And a percentage of proceeds goes to the Disney Conservation Fund uh, for celebrating cotton tops. All right, we got our coffees. I got the uh, flat white. I got a pump of caramel in it, and I got it with almond milk, which flat whites are a lot better when they make it with the regular milk, just so if you can tolerate an entire cup of milk. I recommend that. Yeah, and I got the uh, I got the Quincy. No, I got my go-to order, which was a uh, vanilla latte ice with a vanilla sweet cream cold foam on top. Because you hate the monkeys. No, because you I always get monkeys. a flat white, and I'm exhausted, and, <laughs> and I wanted to. I can't believe you would do this. Come look at their faces. <laughs> Come look them in the eyes and tell them this. Oh my God, you want to tell that monkey? But you don't you don't care about it. No, I I support you all the time. Look at his little mouth. Although I, there's something about these monkeys where their faces look like very, very old men. But they are the tiniest babies. But also, like, if you look, it looks like a bad wig with a bad lace front. Hi, little buddy. You having snack time? Oh, my gosh. Wouldn't it, I, like, wouldn't it be great to hold one? Yes. Um, uh, I once went to Mexico for a vacation. I went to a spider <laughs> monkey sanctuary, and I just and I cuddled with these two spider monkeys for two hours. It was awesome. That sounds great. Yeah. He is racing. He is off to the races this morning. Well, Look at him go. Who, who, in a race, who would win? The cotton top tamarin or the turtle? The turtle. Yeah, because the cotton top tamarin would get cocky. We're now staring at the duck that's swimming through the lily pads. But also, look, it's Pluto! <laughs> hey. hey, Pluto! I've just learned that uh, Donald throws his dino bash because he learned he has dino lineage and he's celebrating. Over in Dino Land USA, because, well, uh, RIP, maybe, see how long that lasts. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, um, di uh, Donald is throwing a dino bash because he's celebrating his newfound lineage because obviously birds go back to dinosaur times. Do you think dinosaurs had feathers? I think they had, I think some did. I think they had uh, mohawks. All right, we've checked out a turtle. We've seen monkeys. We've taken a little stroll around the trails behind Tree of Life, which I highly recommend. Uh, there are a lot of trails that you might not know exist wrapping right around the tree. So if you see a path leading towards the Tree of Life, I recommend taking a step in that direction um, because most likely there's a really beautiful walking trail that you can enjoy. But now we're gonna accelerate our slow morning a bit and start heading to our first lightning lane. Now we do have Genie Plus today. Genie Plus is Disney's Skip the Line offering. Uh, it has a varied cost. It depends on the date and park. So the cheapest park to get Genie Plus for is Animal Kingdom. But since we are park hopping today, we did get the multi-park Genie Plus, which is typically priced uh, as the most expensive along with Magic Kingdom. They're usually priced about the same. Today was $25 for multiple parks. And it's a pretty slow day. So it's not the cheapest thing to do, but if you want a more relaxed day, if you have a limited number of days in Disney World in general, then the savings you have from not staying another night in a hotel could be well beyond what it costs to buy Genie for you and your family. Now in both Animal Kingdom and Epcot, you can also get away without having it and still have a pretty great day. We just would have done this morning a little differently. It would have been a disaster if we got in as late as we did. Um, we would probably would have had to end up cutting something off of our list. Thank you. If you're interested in a strategy with Genie Plus, we have done all four parks doing everything there is to offer with Genie Plus in a day. We've also done every single park doing everything there is to offer without Genie Plus in one day. And yes, that includes Magic Kingdom. And yes, we do tend to try that on busier days. So you can check out those videos on the channel now to learn about those strategies. All right, we've made it to Pandora. This is the most popular land in Animal Kingdom. It is themed to the Avatar movie franchise. My favorite part about this land is that there are two different looks. The first look is the otherworldly, uh, lush greenery daytime look. But at night they have uh, this second look, which is a bioluminescent look where everything kind of comes to life in this uh, glow in the dark kind of way. But we are headed to Navi River Journey. I'm glad I got the lightning lane because currently at 9.10 it is a 50 minute wait. 
Over the years, I've had more respect for Navi River Journey than I have in the past, just because I recently learned that Navi River Journey is supposed to be the Kilimanjaro Safari of Pandora. That's what I've been saying. Nobody listens to me. <laughs> oh, I, you've never Nobody said that to me. To Yo, okay, me. I don't want to hear it. Y'all, it's a weird day. Navi River Journey is 50 minutes. Flight of Passage is 40. 40 minutes. Whoa. That's crazy. It's going to be a weird day, I think. I think so, too. All right. Well, it's officially time for our lightning lane. Shall we... Um, chug our coffees? Chug our coffees. <laughs> well, after okay. successfully... Actually, after unsuccessfully chugging your coffees and it, having... It, the slowest chug you've The slowest chug life. and having a 25-minute conversation about the horror movies on uh, yeah, Netflix. Yeah, we were talking about Mike Flanagan shows like Haunting Hill <laughs> House, Fly Manor, Midnight Mass, and <laughs> Follow the House. Well, yeah, so good. We rivered and we journeyed. Oh yes, uh, we did. Um, and uh, ne first of all, our harmonies during just impeccable. That ride is I, a lot of people come out underwhelmed by it, um, which I understand, especially if you have paid for Genie. It's a hard to get Lightning Lane, and that wait time can get really, really long most days. Uh, I recommend actually going to Navi River Journey relatively early and I wouldn't recommend waiting more than 40 minutes for it But the wait time can often get longer than that and when that happens I hear a lot of people coming out and saying well that was not worth it Which I understand there's not a lot that happens during that ride But it is a peaceful dark ride through the rivers of Pandora. You see that really cool animatronic It is worth doing just be warned that it might not be all that you expect And luckily we uh, we're not we're not doing a bunch of crisscrossing today She's to oh. my wow. It is time for Flight of Passage, and Flight of Passage is a motion simulator attraction where you hop on the back of a banshee or an ecron and you fly over uh, different scenescapes all over Pandora. First time I rode this attraction, I straight up cried. But this is going to, really? First time I rode it. Yeah. But this is going to be your uh, super duper popular attraction, the one that's going to be anywhere up from uh, an hour wait time. We've seen it sometimes go up to 120, 140 minutes, minute wait, uh, depending on when you're here. This is typically something that we uh, recommend rope dropping or getting the individual lightning lane, which we did that today. The individual lightning lane was $15 additional per person. One thing to note about Flight of Passage is that these seats do not accommodate all body types. So if you want to make sure that the seats are comfortable and work for you, you're going to want to head out here and talk to a cast member. There are these tester seats. Thank you, Vanna. Um, wow. And a cast member will be happy to assist you and let you know if you will be able to comfortably ride the attraction. Um, it's not just about comfort. There are also some body types that will not be able to ride this attraction. When you use an individual lightning lane, it works the same as using Genie Plus. You still scan and your park ticket at the entry to an attraction to get in. You can buy an individual lightning lane whether you have Genie Plus or not. It is a completely separate transaction, a completely separate fee. Now, our preferred strategy in Animal Kingdom if we're there for the whole day is to only buy the lightning lane for Flight of Passage. Which you can see when we did uh, an Animal Kingdom Genie, uh, Genie Plus challenge where uh, we had three different choices. One of us had Genie Plus, one of us had an individual lightning lane, and someone had no one, and individual lightning lane was the way to go. Now, Animal Kingdom's Genie Plus is typically priced about the same as the individual Lightning Lane for Flight of Passage. So if you are just going to be in Animal Kingdom for the day, I recommend buying one or the other, and the individual Lightning Lane is typically the better choice. Yes, it definitely gets you through the uh, line quicker, but you don't get as many, like, the queue itself in Flight of Passage is just gorgeous. You That's true. Got the, the huge Avatar animatronic that you get to see in there, and, the, and like, the scientific tube. Uh, all the Easter eggs, the jungle room, you surpass all of that and uh, you then you get straight to the line, which is great, which is what we want to do, right, for, for time reasons, but you will miss out on the uh, really nice, innovative queue. Which is why rope dropping, or as Breedlove re recommends, riding very, very last thing at night is a great idea. He's gotten on in under 10 minutes riding it very last thing at night. Please fill all the way in and stand on your assigned number. That's right. We did it. All right, everyone, stay on your number and move your arms a bit. Okay, start scan. Yeah. Uh, you've 
all got them. What? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, I've, I've got a larger nose. Favorite thing about the okay now one of my favorite things they've created this element in the in the attraction in the ride vehicle where it feels like the banshee is breathing in I, between you your know, legs. I was going to talk about this. Really? That was what I was. I was going to ask you what your favorite thing was, and then I was going to talk about the breathing. I just think it's so uh, um, interesting and, and big, immersive. Immersive. Um, so weird, weirdly, my favorite parts are the water and yeah. the breathing because I think the water is timed Perfect. within an inch of its life. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the breathing. I love the breathing, and then I also love. So most of the time when you're in a ride that flies, there's not like the flight just feels like a very smooth flight. On this, it feels like there are wings flapping. Mm -hmm. So you actually will kind of pitch down a little before as you go if, up. As if wings are flat. It's just a very immersive ride. My favorite parts are when you dive. Yeah. Anytime you dive, like when she's like, can't leave. Motion, calling it a motion simulator attraction, I feel like cheapens it a tad. Yeah, it does. And which is what it is, but it's also like, or because it's just. Also, Star Tours is a motion simulator attraction, <laughs> and they're not in the same. No, they're not in the same thing at all. But this is absolutely a must do. Whether you do that individual lightning lane or rope drop it or ride it last thing day, in the night, yeah. it, is, it is absolutely a must do. Obviously, we don't have that end of the night option today because we won't be here at the end of the night. Because we're baby. Parkhopping, baby. Speaking of which. Um, we gotta get moving. We, we have stuff to do. We have stuff. Kilimanjaro Safari. Ooh. Well, we've done all that we can do, or that we want to do. Uh, in Pandora. Uh, we are probably gonna skip Satuli Canteen, which is their quick service location. Although, Satuli Canteen is my favorite quick service in all of Disney World. I highly recommend it. It is delicious. You get to create your own bowl situation. Also, they have, they're the only place that I've seen Mr. Pib uh, in their, yes, in their uh, the soda fountain. Revelation. Also, I think we're probably going to skip Pongu Pongu because I'm not a huge fan of the Pongu Lumpia, which would, which would be considered a breakfast. Pongu Pongu, you know what that means? Party party. Yeah. yeah. Party party. Party party. Hey, I'd like you guys to come to my party. Uh, can you guys bring <laughs> chips, snacks? Don't worry. I'm bringing the warm cream cheese. The only thing we're missing, I think, if you could pick something up on the way is just the warm cream cheese. <laughs> but now we're headed to Africa uh, after we did our lightning lane for Navi River Journey. I quickly booked uh, Kilimanjaro Safari. I didn't really need to because uh, the line was still currently five to ten minutes. Wow, it's but, so slow today. Yes, but, but, but if you have it, I mean, you might as well use it. Yeah. We've made it to Kilimanjaro Safari here in Africa. Once we get off Kilimanjaro Safari, it'll probably be 11 o'clock, which is a great time to uh, start looking at potentially uh, stacking lightning lanes for Epcot. Oh wow, walking right in. This attraction is really fun because you can see tons of different animals. It's different every time because they are real animals in habitats similar to the natural ones they would live in. Um, it's actually one of my favorite rides in Disney World because of that. And uh, I got the good side. The left side's the good side. Haha. <laughs> I got the good side. I know. You're, I mean, you're welcome. I did it on purpose. Yeah, right. I know how much you love this ride. Wow, that's really nice of you. kind of not proved but in a, in a way proved the, those animals were so active they were yeah. everywhere they were um, it's a morning on a it's cooler a, day it's a morning they were crossing the street they were super close to the uh, ride vehicle yeah. so that was a lot of fun uh, I, it's 11 o'clock this day is you want corn 
we don't have to. We can it. we can do. That was not a judgment. I'm sorry. That sounded judgy, but we can do corn. No, it's okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I feel like we should. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple options. Okay. I, have, I have a couple options on here. Okay. One, we can get a beverage and go to the next ride and then do like a, a noon walk up list at Nomad Lounge. Oh. Or we can get corn and like, and that can be like a, a snack before, because we have a one o'clock viewing of Finding the Mother Musical because hashtag live entertainment is important. I'm ready. You said no mad loud, no. which was maybe the only thing you could say to get me off the corn. But I might still get corn. You can get a beverage. I'm getting corn. That's my pre no mad lounge snack. That's fair. I'm, I'm I'm not mad at that. All right, let's go. You're gonna you you're really gonna do the corn thing. I am. This is Harambe Fruit Market, but really they should call it Harambe Corn Market because that's what everybody's here for. Guarantee all these people in line. Corn. Yeah, when I was ranking uh, different uh, Animal Kingdom restaurants, I had to compare them to an animal. You know what a Harami Fruit Market was? What? The goats from the Kilimanjaro Safari. Because it's the goat? Yes, but also do you want to know why? Why? Because what are those goats doing on an African safari? And what is this corn doing, this delicious corn doing at a random fruit market? Okay, good point. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I'm very pro this corn. It's a spiced corn. They slather that thing in butter. You can get it with or without the spices. It's not like spicy. It's just like delicious actually. Mm -hmm. So I don't recommend getting it without the spices. I do recommend getting it though. But if you are plant-based, we did learn that you can actually get it without the butter and yeah. with the spices. Interesting. Good stuff. Do you want a drink? No, I'm going, I'm going with my corn. Okay. So you're going to wait for Nomad Lounge. I'm going to wait for Nomad Lounge. That's fair. I'll see you later. See you later. <laughs> This is a great part about one, having friends that you feel comfortable enough to be like, hey, you know what? We're gonna do something different. We're gonna do other things right now because we both have different priorities, which is a huge part about having perfect days. Knowing what your priorities are, uh, and if, if that's different priorities, being okay to split up for just a second, even for you know an hour or two, and doing the things that are important to you to make sure that your Disney World day that you spent a bunch of money on is perfect. Which is why I am here at Dawa Bar. Dawa Bar is the uh, walk-up bar here in Africa. It is a full bar, but they do have some specialty cocktails like the African Margarita, Nugumu Jungle Juice, Lost on Safari, and Harambe Iced Tea. The Lost on Safari actually features the Pangoni Punch, which is very similar to Pog Juice. Now, Dawa Bar does have a, a covered seating area. There's not a bunch of seats on a slow day like today. Uh, it is, you, know, you definitely can find a seat underneath here, but it definitely is super useful when you're trying to get out of the sun and just pull up to a quick uh, table because they do have a couple seats at the bar, but they are very limited. As you can see, there are only four seats at the bar currently. I did get the Harambe iced tea, which is uh, vodka, New Amsterdam gym, Don Q crystal rum, Vanderhelm liqueur, sweet and sour, and orange juice with a splash of Sprite. Now, just a reminder, they only have paper straws available. I did not get a straw because the texture of the paper straw just doesn't work with me. So I would rather go strawless. As anticipated, it's very juice forward. Lots of orange juice, lots of Sprite. I can taste a little bit of the alcohol just because it is uh, one of the stronger drinks, even though it is pre-mixed. It tastes like a morning drink to me because of the orange juice. So this is definitely, I would like a brunch cocktail, less of like a Long Island iced tea, we're gonna party all night. Har Harambe iced tea, I would say, is a is a brunch cocktail because of the orange juice. This is the corn, covered in garlic salt and a couple other spices, as well as a ton of butter. Most of the time, they won't grill it. Uh, look at the butter. It's all over my hands. That's hand. wild. Most of the time, they will grill it fresh for you, but that's weather permitting because they can't run the grill. Right now, where it looks like it could rain, they have the corn pre-prepped to be able to just kind of pull it out of the hot thing. It's still hot. They still made it today. It's just not white. Not like right off the grilled corn, but I bet it's still good. You don't want to. You don't. You don't want to see this. You don't want to see this. <laughs> corn was good. I think I'm going to say something here. That is my new hot tip, which is not to get the corn if you don't see them really yet fresh. This was still tasty, but it was not as like hot and delicious and like melty buttery as usual. It's covered in butter, covered in seasoning, a little bit over seasoned and not as hot as I would like it. So I would say if you see them filling the corn fresh, get the corn. If you don't see them filling it fresh, 
maybe wait and try to come back a little later, see if they're really fresh then, but it just doesn't, it doesn't hit the same. I don't know that it's worth the spend when it's not real fresh. Wait, is that the, is that the Discovery Island drummers? Yeah, I think so. Quick, join them. Join them? The, the drum, drum, you must, you must join them in their song. Join them. No, on. I can't hear, I have a head on it. One, da, 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 da. Yeah, you're hired. Oh. <laughs> this is a, turning out to be a very chill day. Very chill. Very chill, which is not bad because, uh, you know, one of the things we try and preach on the channel is that it's important uh, to, sure, have an itinerary, do everything that you want to do, hit your must-dos, but also go with the flow, stop and smell the roses, enjoy your time. Because yeah. uh, if, you're, if you're so stressed and bogged down by all the things you're not doing, uh, then you'll never experience the things you actually are doing. Wow, that was very profound. That was profound. Oh, uh, that was profound of you. <laughs> we are headed to Expedition Everest. Uh, and it's currently, it was a 10 minute wait, but I booked the lightning lane because why not? I literally jinxed myself the second I said, well, we don't need the Epcot stuff right now. Uh, frozen. <laughs> frozen. At Wiley Gal. At Wiley Gal. Uh, so we made our first lightning lane over at Epcot uh, for 3.30. Uh, and then uh, and then we'll start stacking. We'll start stacking them and see what happens. But until then, Expedition Everest is only a 15 minute wait. I'm, hot take, we always do single rider. Let's not. Let's not and just let, let's, let's for once. You, you let, I'm gonna make a prediction. We're gonna not do single rider, here's my prediction. Yeah? You're gonna have an, not enough time to finish your drink. We're gonna have to, you're gonna have to drink fast or we're gonna have to pull over. That, Honestly, that's fine. I just want to sit with my friends on the ride for I, once yeah, instead of... a stranger. Uh, no, I love strangers. Now, what we mean when we say stacking lightning lanes is uh, we're talking about a little strategy that we use where you can basically start booking lightning lanes for the afternoon. Now, typically, you can only book a new lightning lane after you've either used the one you have or after a two-hour cool down. That means to get multiple lightning lanes at once, you do have to wait through that two-hour cool down every time you book one. But as I always say, filler attractions, the one that you do between your two-hour cool down, are often the best attractions and the thing that make Disney, Disney. Don't you agree? I love Triceratops spin. When <laughs> I tell you. We waited about 10 minutes. We rode Expedition Everest. Um, if together. you together, we did ride together. It never happened. It was very nice. We usually use the single rider line. Yeah. Um, which is a great option because if you are willing to, willing and able to split up your party and if or if you're a single rider, you can ride really quickly almost any time as long as that line is open. Yeah. So Nomad Lounge? Yeah. <laughs> This is one of the channel's favorite places to come to at Disney's Animal Kingdom. This is Nomad Lounge. Nomad Lounge is a lounge right on the outskirts of Pandora and Discovery Island. It actually shares a kitchen with Tiffin's, a South African inspired restaurant. It does have this really amazing outdoor patio where you can see the uh, flotillas with characters pass by, but also this gorgeous uh, lounge area that's all about travel, where you can actually put your own travel experiences on a tag and you can put it uh, high above the bar. Now you are gonna find some small plates here at Nomad Lounge with the Tiffin's bread service, uh, a, a charcuterie board, some glazed pork belly, but really, why you're gonna come here are the beverages. Okay, Sage and I agreed that today we each have to plan a mini game for each other and then it's like spring it on each other at a random time and play a mini game. So, my mini game that I wanna play is I'm gonna make us pick each other's drinks here at Nomad Lounge. I know that he always gets the same thing here, I always get the same thing here. So, we're gonna spring it on each other. I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, Snow Leopard Salvation and I know he likes the Tempting Tigers. So, we're running for each other. 
Hey, surprise! Oops, I'm, I'm here. I was doing a spiel. It's mini game time. Oh no, it's yes. it's start. Okay. Yes. Wait, I haven't thought of my. Are I you doing mine? I'm doing mine. Oh, okay. Your mini game can leave. You can screen on me later. But we got to know our lounge menu. Yes. My mini game. No, there's no winners or losers in this, or maybe there is. There's definitely a winner and a loser. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, we're gonna pick each other's drinks. Oh. That's the whole game. <laughs> okay, I have been I have been begging Quincy because Quincy's in a little bit of an uh, of her old fashioned era right now. I have been begging Quincy. Uh, my favorite drink here is the Tempting Tigress. We could have seen this coming. Uh, I have been begging Quincy to try the Tempting Tigress. It's like sweeter old fashioned. It's really good. So that's the drink I am choosing for you. The, the Tempting Tigress. Uh, well, we'll talk about it in a second. And I am going to get the Night Monkey for Sage because because I, I am the monkey of the night. <laughs> Tonight. And I've never had it before. I have never had it before either. I want to know what it's, it's like. Okay. But I don't. I don't want to take that risk. Okay, okay let's do so. it. So I was given the night monkey. Which is plantation original dark rum, guava puree, coffee simple syrup, and lime juice with a hint of cilantro. It's like a whole meal. It's like in Willy Wonka when they chew the gum and it's Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner. <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. Um, and then I was gifted, given the tempting tigress, which is Russell's Reserve 10 year bourbon, St. Elizabeth allspice trim, tamarind syrup, and lime juice. Both of these are actually from the Asia section of the menu, but a very fun aspect of Nomad Lounge is that it's inspired by being nomadic around the world. So they've also got an Africa travel. section to the menu. It's all inspired by travel. It's inspired by travel. It's travel. <laughs> it's inspired by it's travel. Inspired by the travel with the soap gauges <laughs> and the dirty sock. A valise. Um, and we've also got a Central and South America section. And, oh my gosh, and a, a wildlife, wildlife conservation and local discovery section. Why have I never seen this one before? I, it's on the is, back of the menu. This is also what I order. I'm, Look, it's our friends. You order the Snow Leopards Salvation? I do. Oh. See, I'm lazy. I just never flip over the menu. I'm yeah. like, well, I guess this is the menu. You've always been with me when I've just gone dirty martini. That's true, and I was <laughs> yeah. in Manhattan. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of us <laughs> for ordering off the menu. <laughs> it's so full. Choice that you made for me. I can't tell if you really mean that. I'm gonna keep you guessing. I'll tell them how I feel. You're not gonna tell. I'll tell you how I feel. Um, it's like a smoothie martini. Specifically, I believe because of the guava puree, it's a thicker martini. Uh, it's not. It's like it's not liquefied. It definitely feels. Like a, like a thicker puree. Like milk? No, thicker than milk. Oh. Thicker than milk because you can kind of uh, you can kind of like feel the. Like blue milk. Yes, but less ricey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um, rum, right? It is rum. You don't taste a lot of the rum, but you do taste a lot of that guava. Uh, it's like a guava. It's a guava rum smoothie. In a martini glass. Interesting. I'm following you, though. You get that? Yeah. Okay, what about you? I think that your description of this is perfect. It's just like a slightly sweeter old-fashioned. You can taste a lot of the bourbon, and I think you get a lot of that tamarind. It's got like a really nice acidity to it. This is a really good one. I'm a fan. Yeah. Good job. And this is a full bar, so that way if if none of these specialty cocktails are good for you, yeah, or a dirty martini. Then you can get that, too. And you can see us do that in a lot of other videos. Yes. Nomad Lounge also has a small plates menu and make sure to turn this around because they have their standard small plates and then they usually have more on the back. Um, sometimes there are seasonal specials which is pretty cool but uh, we did go ahead and grab some small plates as like our little mini lunch here. We're going to eat some more later so we figured start light. Um, I went with the land salad for $14 which is this week's harvest of young lettuces and vegetables from the land pavilion at Epcot. Plus, walnut roasted tomato muhamara, garlic breadcrumbs feta, sumac, and a citrus vinaigrette. So I got the Cuban Frita sliders, which is beef and pork patties, uh, crispy shoestring potatoes, and mojo yuca fries. Mm. Moho? Yuca fries is not a potato. It's a root, but it simulates a potato. It's still very good. It reminds me of a big steak fry. 
real big lettuce over here. Um, it's delicious. And the produce is really, really fresh, which makes sense because it's literally grown right next to our Epcot. What's the vinaigrette on it? It's like a citrus vinaigrette. Is that Parmesan cheese on top, too? There's Parmesan cheese, uh. there's red pepper. So there's like a little bit of heat to it. Um, I wouldn't say the lettuce is the most crisp, but it is very fresh. It's just that it's um, not the crispest type of lettuce. Yeah, yeah. You've also got like a mixed veggies that are a, from the land as well. Oh, I'm a fan of Parmesan cheese on salads. It's The Parmesan cheese really brings it together, and it's perfectly dressed. I hate a pre-dressed salad most of the time because I like a lot of dressing. Same. Um, but sometimes places get it right. Here's the thing that I appreciate about the Nomad Lounge um, is that there are small bites, which means I'm going to be able to walk around for the rest of the day and not feel just like absolute misery. Now, are the sliders good? Absolutely. They're tender. Uh, they're juicy. The shoestring potatoes uh, add like a little bit of crunch, which is awesome. But my th my thing about it is that they're, they're, they're small enough that I'm going to be able to go and snack, I don't know, at the next location in like, what, two hours? 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, obviously with how things go, because we are very good at our jobs, but also really um, bad at our jobs. <laughs> we talked for a long time just about life things and, and, yeah. and marriages and partnerships and things like that. And we realized, oh my God, we have five minutes until Nemo. So, fingers crossed we make it. Luckily, we both have very long legs. And luckily, it's a slow day. Yeah. So, uh, typically, we recommend arriving to shows at least 30 minutes before uh, before showtime. This that we're doing, do as we say, not as we do. Do not do this. It's a bad idea. Viva Gaia! Woo! You think we're going to make it? Uh, I'm going to say yes, even though I don't mean it. <laughs> no, we're, we're going we're to be fine. Okay, are you sure? We've got to make it. Barely made it. The Fighting Nemo, The Big Blue and Beyond is a 25 minute musical uh, theatrical show where it's a retelling of Pixar's Finding Nemo. The timeline actually takes place within Finding Dory. Oh, you really blocked me there. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, is your nose bleeding? Oh, that's good. Right now, Animal Kingdom is the only place you can see these big theatrical Broadway mm -hmm. caliber style shows. At this level. At this sure. level. Finding the uh, Big Bloom Beyond and Festival of the Lion King, which we're not going to do today because it's not Quincy's favorite, which <laughs> that's that's its own. We're, we have fights about that. We do. Uh, Things get dramatic. But go check out Finding Nemo and amazing job to the cast. You guys are awesome. Yep. Also, uh, if none of that sounds appealing to you, one, two. <laughs> Air conditioning for 25 minutes. Yeah. Benches with backs. That's huge. For 25 minutes. A little nap, you know? You know? No, 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 you do not nap okay. in Finding I've Nemo, never Big Blue and Beyond. I'm crying, but you. Like, you, you no, no, you emote. You enjoy the surroundings. It's the only place, what do I say? It's the only place uh, in Disney World, live entertainment, where you can feel collective joy. I will end you! <laughs> well, this is it. This is, a, this is our Animal Kingdom Day. Do you feel uh, like Animal Kingdom? Do you feel properly Animal Kingdom? I feel properly Animal Kingdom. Good. I've seen a lot of animals. Yeah, and uh, it's been a great kind of chill morning. It is officially time that we leave. Officially, because we just saw Finding Nemo. Did you see that I wasn't even paying attention? It was good. That, that was good. Um, it is now time to leave now officially time animal kingdom to get swimming on over it is just before two o'clock at the time of filming park hopping time is two o'clock but in 2024 that is not going to be the case uh we're so excited for the park hopping time to go away uh, you can find all those details coming up on the channel soon january 9th baby yes <laughs> well, uh which is gonna make our challenges a I, lot wilder a lot wilder so i'm excited for that well we're gonna have some fin over in epcot what? <laughs> some fin? Some fin. Is that your version of fun? Oh my gosh. We'll see you over there. 
whale see you over there. Whale see you. Mm -hmm. Man, I mm -hmm. left that one. Sitting. We've looked at the uh, at the posted bait times. Pretty good. <laughs> Most of the is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's not looking too bad. It's a little, definitely a little more crowded than Animal Kingdom, but it's not going to be too bad. Uh, so far, we have uh, Frozen and Test Track on the books. Well, I'm hooked. <laughs> We have made it to Epcot, uh, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Every person comes out tired. Every person comes out tipsy. Oh, no, so you run with a different crowd. Okay. Um, so we have a little bit, it's currently 2.30. We have a little bit before our first lightning lane, which means we've got time to kill. Okay, a couple random thoughts. Look how weird we look at this. I prefer not to. Oh, we're in different ones. Now we're in the same one. <laughs> uh, we can do a couple things. We've got about an hour. We do. Do you want to do? So you want to like write something? Or are you hungry and you want to eat or snack? Because we got time. Do you want yeah, to ride something? You want to ride something? Uh, or no, so you want to experience attraction? Yeah, yes, I want to experience attraction. Okay. Do you want to go to World Discovery or World Nature? World Nature. Okay. Do we want to attempt? A living with the land, or maybe a Moana walkthrough. Ooh, my salad. We should go to the land. Your salad. My salad. <laughs> the salad. The salad. <laughs> we drove over to Epcot from Animal Kingdom because we drove to the park this morning. If you are going to drive to the park, you will have to pay for parking. Uh, it's twenty-five dollars a day, and it is a day for all the parks. So you will get a receipt, and then if you keep that receipt with you, do not lose it. Uh, you can park at the other parks without paying again. So if you're park hopping, you only have to pay once. You don't have to pay multiple times, which is great. Um, the other options for getting to Epcot from Animal Kingdom are going to be the bus. Buses start running about an hour before park hop time, typically. And uh, you can just bus directly over. It's a pretty quick bus ride, about 15 minutes. Or you can take an Uber, which of course does cost money, but tends to be the faster, um, even faster than a car usually, because you don't have to walk from parking as far. That's true. Um, but it's usually about... I found around $10 to go park to park via Uber, and um, that is an option, although the buses are not that much slower, and there's some magic to a Disney bus. Okay, hear me out. Oh, we should go on the seas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was like, we just ended with Nemo. I feel like we you- We should go Nemo. We just did Salad Nemo, so we need to go Nemo Salad It's here. a good transition. Yeah. The thing about this ride for me is that it feels a little bit uh, last minute, lots of screens, uh, minimal moving animatronics. Uh, but at the end of this attraction, uh, there's a whole uh, there's a whole aquarium, and it's actually the second largest aquarium in the country, second largest to Georgia, which I think is super cool. Uh, plus a whole uh, Turtle Talk with Crush show where you get to ask Crush at his live entertainment some questions. I suppose we should say hi to the manatees. Oh, hey. Emma loves the manatees. So we I know. Oh, them. hey, buddy. I like when they do that. I that Well, I think that's the end of our Finding Nemo day. <laughs> We're not going to Art of Animation? No. Explore? No, but I do think we really made a splash. We did Salad Nemo, Nemo, Salad. We're going to ride the land.
What? What did we plan? You no, know, we did salad. Salad, then Nemo. Nemo, Nemo, Nemo then salad. salad. Head to the land pavilion where we can see where my salad was grown. Yeah, we are headed to the land uh, to ride living with the land because uh, it's currently a five minute wait and we're doing a bunch of filler attractions. And on Living with the Land, they teach you a little bit about agriculture and how Disney is working on making more sustainable crops and farmland for uh, the future of America. That's how you get when I get super. Rainwater and nutrients gradually cut. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. Only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. So here we are just traveling to Norway. I know you said we're gonna do something else. I just have to I just have to walk in here for myself. I, I just it's just it's my favorite pavilion. It's the best day ever. I no it's just the best day ever. You know I'm, I'm really enjoying that the walls of the pyramid are lined with people drinking margaritas. Like, look, at all, look at all the margaritas. The margaritas on the wall. Now, listen, we don't have to do anything, we just have to walk inside. This is my favorite pavilion. It's the only place, the only pavilion that transforms the pavilion from daytime into nighttime. You know, but it's okay. Oh, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Really, really. You're still walking. No, I, no, we don't have to do anything. We just, uh, I just want to be in this pavilion. Just enjoying the, um, enjoying the area. Going the area. Uh huh. Yeah. And how long are we going to area for? I, I just wanted to be like just a little in a different spot, but still in this area. I've tried to leave three times. I just, it, just to be clear, we are in line for a comedy with you. Like no, the sign. I mean, I mean, no, there's a roped off. It's rope, we're roped into it. Technically, but really, we're just enjoying the area. So the bar that I'm currently like standing next to, I wouldn't say in line for it, but standing next to, uh -huh. is La Cava del Tequila. And you're stealing it because... I, well, I feel like it would be, it would be irritated if I didn't and I'm so close to it. It being the building. La Cava del Tequila is their uh, tequila bar here in the Mexico Pavilion. It is a full bar. They do have other liquors, but tequila is their specialty. This is where you're going to grab all of your margaritas, your tequila flights, your shots of tequila, whatever floats your boat. We're still just enjoying the ambiance. Yeah, wow, it's lovely what? in here. What is this? Have you seen these lighting pictures? I just wanted to take, take, to take you in here so you would see these lighting pictures. I've seen the lighting Yeah, we got we got uh, we got we got some tequila. The great thing about La Cava del Tequila are the bartenders are the best at what they do. You have a conversation with them, you say, "Hey, uh, what do you have in this price range?" And they're like, uh, and, "And with Reposado." Actually, he didn't even say anything. He just set down a bottle of liquor. There were no, no like I, Sage said words. The man then turned around like, this. and sat down and was like, "This one." <laughs> I was like, "Great, I love your confidence." <laughs> Well, our plans have been put on hold again because Quincy loves the mariachi band here in Mexico. Do not let me leave this part without getting caramel popcorn. I want caramel apple. I'm serious. That's like, do not let me leave. Yeah, I know you'll get in trouble with your wife. I will get in trouble. <laughs> because, because last time I was here filming... Oh no, you forgot? No, I, I bought it. Oh, you bought it. And then I got on a ride, and then I forgot the bag on the ride. I lost it. I can't believe you're still standing here today. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, don't let me forget. Okay, well, I want a caramel apple, so that could be our, our, our big finale. We've made it to our first uh, lightning lane here. It was so long ago, I forgot about it. <laughs> At Epcot. Uh, frozen ever after. It's currently a uh, wait time of 55 minutes, but we have a lightning lane. The best part about the ride is that as soon as you get there, she immediately turns you away. <laughs> really? Yeah, she goes, let it go, and she pushes you out backwards. It's, That's very Elsa. It's the worst. I absolutely 
love Frozen Ever After. It uh, makes me feel like a little kid again. It makes me feel like riding Snow White when I was a little kid. We've made a decision. I'm thinking we should do fish and chips. Oh, he's thinking we should do fish and chips. Now, to be fair, it was my idea, but I also wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like led him to it instead of just saying that I wanted to go eat. <laughs> it's like going to the Cheesecake Factory. So many options. And you have so many options. Paralyzed by choice. Paralyzed by choice. Like, what do you do? So I think it's. I think we need to eat something. Yeah. To, to fuel our brains. To fuel our brains. <laughs> so now uh, let's let's eat something and then figure out what is next. I like that plan. We have officially made it to the UK Pavilion. Now there are actually two places you can get the fish and chips. There's the Yorkshire County Fish Shop where you can actually just get the uh, fish and chips, but. Here at the Rose and Crown Pub, you can actually have the food um, there as well. Typically, the Rose and Crown has a much smaller uh, line because you can grab a beverage. And as you can see, there's a pretty, there's a pretty uh, decent line over there. So, do you want to go to the pub? You can get the fish and chips at the pub. Yeah, stick with me, kid. Let's go. Are you serious? Yes. This is my hack, baby. And this is the Rosen Crown Pub where you can grab a bunch of different beer as it is a full bar, but they do have their food menu available right here. Quincy got a beer I can't pronounce. Smittix. Smittix. And uh, I was trying to find something that was like... He was like, let's go like Irish pubby. Irish pubby and they're like... It's really cool and pretty. It, and it's this it's is not pretty. She was just like, Jameson. And then she poured out Jameson. And they're like, do you want a double? I was like... I probably should have gotten a double. <laughs> it's fine. I don't need. I don't need this much. The double's to drink. only two dollars more, though, if you're drinking at the pub. That's very true. Um, also, if you're drinking at the pub, they do have some pub food, which is news to me. It's only a scotch egg and fish and chips. That's the whole menu. But we waited. Well, one, we got to get a drink, and two, we did not have to wait in that line uh, for the Yorkshire Fish Company. Mm -hmm. So, want to show them the bag? I'll show them the bag. This is the bag. <laughs> I want to show them the cup with things? Yeah. This is our cup of things. This, she asked us if we wanted ketchup, tartar sauce, and vinegar. We said all of the above. She gave us a cup of things. She delivered. She delivered. Shall we? This is Smittix. It's my favorite beer. It's spelled Smithwicks. Uh, it's my favorite beer of all time. You can really only get it at like Irish and UK pubs. In Disney World, that is the pub in the UK pavilion, as well as um, Raglan Road. At Universal, you can get it at Finnegan's, I know for sure. It is the best beer ever i'm convinced whoa yeah i like i've never had anything that holds a candle to this and i've never heard anybody disagree whoa when they've had it but it's a pretty you can see it's got a pretty dark body it's got the heavy flavor of a dark body but it's easy to drink so it's not like a guinness where you feel like you're, you've had a loaf of bread by the time you finish drinking a, a pint it's a lot lighter a lot easier to drink so it still has all that big bold flavor with like an, an easiness to it I love Smittix, and if you drink beer, you should try it. The thing about it is that they are definitely fish and chips, but they might not be the <laughs> Yorkshire. These are for sure These fish are and chips. Thousand percent. Those are fish, fish and chips. Chips, but they might not be the uh, Yorkshire uh, fish and chips. They might be the Rose and Crown mm -hmm. fish and chips, which because I thought I assumed the connection, uh, the, the kitchens were connected. They taste different to me. Maybe I'm batty. I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> I see that you chose to use a fork. <laughs> I see that you chose to use your hands. We're in the privacy of our own home. You're right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It's so good, mm -hmm. but too. For me, I really believe a good fish and chips, uh, for the fish specifically, it all comes down to the batter and the casing. It's fried really well. And then uh, the inside, I hate a fishy fish. Like uh, too salty, too oceany. Um, it's, but cod, it, cod is typically, white it's fish typically is, cod. Not, is, is not super fishy. And so the, the combination, the balance of, is really great. The tartar sauce, I don't, I, to be honest, I, you're gonna have to tell me if it's different. I don't I think, think this is the Yorkshire. And maybe I don't I've think been, it's different. The yeah. one that I had when we reviewed Rosen Crown, which you can see uh, we did on our, Best day ever in Epcot. We reviewed Rose and Crown for dinner and I got the fish and chips, or maybe Emma did, but they were breadier than this. And I didn't like them as much. Um, so that's just, that. it's just something when you're at the sit down restaurant to expect. Yeah. I don't know if I got a bad batch in that instance, because these taste just like the Yorkshire ones. I will say Disney is 
nothing if not inconsistent. inconsistent. Anyway, we're having a great time. Um, the fries, they are like thicker. They're perfectly salted. They're Have perfectly you noticed salted that? there, but they're thicker mm. steak fries. That chips love. Your love. Oh. But I'm, I'm governor. I like doing the tartar sauce with the fish and the vinegar with the chips. Me too. Yeah, that's how I rock. Yeah, me too. Good good choice, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Is that talking to us? <laughs> good choice, you guys. Good, good choice. Good choice, good us. Good choice, us. <laughs> Who do you think lives at the flat with the yellow curtains? Um, who's the hen from Robin Hood? <laughs> um, I don't remember her name, but okay, sure. <laughs> okay, fine. Then, then it's not her. Here's the thing about the fish and chips. I, I could not eat another thing. I am so full. We split it too. It's just. And this is like I'm at fullness level. That this is I'm. This is maximum speed. <laughs> my body's capable of. So for funsies, because it's that time. Oh no. We're headed to test track. <laughs> and then uh, we'll see where the wind takes us. It's an easy day. It's an easy day. It's a good day. A Lots good of, day. We're doing a lot of stuff and I feel easy and good. We made it to Test Track presented by Chevrolet, a high speed thrill attraction where you design your own car and then test it out. Now, typically, we, we would recommend doing the single rider line, but because it's only a 45 minute wait, it's a lower uh, capacity day to day, we got our own Lightning Lane for it, which means we get to ride together and actually do the full experience where we design our car as opposed to doing the single rider line, which is a, an abridged version of designing the car. All right, Quincy's on the phone right now but uh, I think it's my turn. I think I have to give her a game. I still have to give her some sort of mini game. And I think I'm gonna try, uh, I'm gonna get her to make the highest score possible on test track. Here we go. Hey, Quincy. Okay. Uh, so here's your mini game. Oh here, no, oh no! <laughs> Wait, it wasn't ready! Wait, no, here at test track, you have to design the, the, the car with the highest possible points. Oh, okay. Highest possible score. for efficiency, 76 for power, and 41 for responsiveness. We'll see how we do. Then once you've designed your car, the big thing, wait for this car to leave the station, the car before you. Wait for it to leave the station, then scan your card, uh, because you don't want that that car to... Get your hard work. Get all your hard work, exactly. You can probably do it now. Just waiting to be safe. Okay. I want to make sure that I win your game. All right, fair. You can probably do it now. Waiting to be safe. Okay, this is our car. Go, go, now, quick. Did I wait too long? I think you waited too long. Can I try this one? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Too long. <laughs> Scan it after the car leaves, but before your car gets there. <laughs> Second of all, you can still check your score even if you don't get it on the ride. 214. Oh, oh, 232. That's not bad. That's only 15, almost 15 points away. Yeah. That's not bad. I didn't rank for any categories because I was going for an overall yeah. situation, but. Yeah, 232 is the max score you can get, and I got 214. So. So, solid score. Can I win your game? Uh, absolutely. As long Yay! as as long as you start the process of buying a Chevrolet here, the Symporium. Oh my God, I didn't know that was a plan. Uh, <laughs> I think we've got a pretty solid plan now. 
Uh, we are at uh, Cosmic Rewind. Your stage is going to carry me the rest of the night. <laughs> that was the item one in the plan. I mean, yes, I will say the earlier you start, the earlier you start to fade. Yeah, we're uh, both struggling right now. We've been out since, I mean, we parked at Animal Kingdom a little after 8 a.m. A little after 8 a.m. But obviously both of us are up well before that, not as early as we should have been. And being in a Disney park is exerting. It yeah. is a long day. So this is a, this is a no judgment zone. Yeah. But before we get into all that, we do have our individual lightning lane for Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, it just dropped, so let's go. If Sage and I were going to be two Guardians of the Galaxy, we'd be the two main ones, Star-Lord and Drax. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> burn, baby, burn. What are what are you hoping to get? Everybody wants to roll every time. Oh. Yes, it's a good one. I got September yesterday, so I'm gonna say Conga. For you to travel to Xandar would take two and a half million years. Is he gonna need it? The curse of Disco Inferno lives on. You know what? And you know I knew it was going to because as soon as I said, I don't have it, Fry doesn't have it, Fry thinks you have it right now, and you said, no, I got September yesterday, I was like, no way, we're not about to get it. <laughs> Which means now, one of us, if not both of us, has one it. One of us has it. Oh, man. Uh, such a good ride, the best yeah. ride, I, uh, the best thrill ride, not the best storytelling ride, but the best thrill ride. Yeah, it is, the, the way that ride makes you physically feel Wild. unlike anything else. It, it, it is like, it feels like flying through space. Like, if you kind of like let yourself get lost in it, it feels like you're literally just flying. Yeah. It's amazing. But now I think it's time to do uh, the newest attraction, because that was the second newest, the newest attraction here in Epcot. Uh, it's a brisk. It's a brisk time for it. Time I'd say. for it. But you know what? Uh, brisk good. waits for no one. All right, it is time for the newest attraction, uh, Journey of Water. It's great inspired that I'm by Moana. I know it's a little chilly, but I mean, we can't we can't not do it. Uh, I haven't done it since uh, Castle River Previews, the very first day of Castle River Previews. And I definitely haven't done it at night. Yeah, uh, it's so pretty. This is like perfect lighting because you'll still be able to see all the details. Yeah. But you get that night effect too. I'm excited. It's so Do you want my little wraparound thingy? I want it after. After? Yeah. Okay, all right, let's go. First, you start off with the rain, where our cycle begins the rain. Where did Quincy go? I don't, I don't even know. Oh, cool. Look at the lights, it's gorgeous. What's super cool about this is that all the water in the experience is collected and recirculated. So whatever you do, do not drink it because they're trying to conserve on water while they teach you about it. And then there's this stream. Over here you can, uh, you can wave at the water. Wave at it, Quincy, wave! Whoa! Say hey! Hey! Oh. <laughs> You're magical. Yeah, I kind of control water with my mind. Do you want to play mermaids? What? Do you want to play mermaids? Duh. POV, you're playing mermaids. Oh. I have the magical water powers. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> wanted to play mermaids. Poor unfortunate soul. I'm, I'm always, I'm always a bad guy. <laughs> Tell me what you got with your magical water powers. Wow, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, Tafiti, look how gorgeous that is. All right. And then we, get to the, then we get to the ocean section where you work together as a unit to make some powerful moments. You ready? ready? Yeah, three, two, one. Yay! Yeah. 
Every, let's everybody do it. Let's, let's see if we can get as many, as many people as possible. Here we go, everybody get on. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Yeah! This and Frozen are the things that make me feel the most like a little kid. And what's interesting is I love Frozen. I'm a big Frozen girl. Love those movies. She's been Frozen. I don't love Moana. Oh yeah. And this attraction makes me feel like a little kid. It makes me feel like I can play and learn. And like, like I'm grown. I do think even on busy days, uh, they do a really good job at still keeping it uh, the same experience. It doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, I mean, right now, it's very slow, so we, we can just walk right up to it, not a big deal. Yeah, I've been in while it's been super busy, and even then, like, uh, I, Fi and I went in off camera for her first time seeing it, and even then we were able to, within like a minute or two, interact with all of the water features. For each one, it was a minute or two wait. It was nothing crazy. That was re it was really slim there. It was like hard to move around. Yeah. I know how we can warm up. How? Um, have you ever heard of the Library of Alexandria? It burned. It was horrible and Rome fell, but it, it was a fire. And I know where we can find it. Spaceship Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Our perfect day is slowly coming to a close, but this is definitely something that I recommend you never skipping on your Epcot day. Spaceship Earth is a slow moving journey to the past that explores how the future was invented one step at a time. Arguably, this is one of the better soundtracks, just back to this music in general, of, of Epcot attractions. Now, during the 2020 closure, they did talk about revamping this ride. They have since uh, put those plans to the side, so it is still the same Spaceship Earth you know and love. But for now, let's just, let's just, let's just get Spaceship Earthy. Big travelers. <laughs> An Epcot staple. But after you get off Spaceship Earth, there's this Project Tomorrow area where you can play a couple different mini games. I think we're going to attempt Power City. There we go. Maybe. Oh, green power. How do you know all this? What, what happened to you when they were actually in the game? <laughs> I was trying to get my one puck to do anything. We basically charged up the city of Cairo. But we are killing the environment with coal. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, the night is over. Then why are we walking away from your car? <laughs> because are you watching fireworks? I was trying to figure out a way to make this like fun and exciting and different. Uh, and I, did, I really did not love the fact that we um, got Disco Inferno. So as a, so just, I joined the virtual queue. We're gonna do Cosmic Rewind one more time. Well, uh, and the, that's really only possible because it's that slow of a day. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, and fortunately, uh, we're doing a Guardian of the Galaxy, which means we will miss going to get a spot for the fireworks. Now that's all because our priorities had nothing to do with fireworks. Yeah, unfortunately right now Epcot's fireworks show is Epcot Forever, which is not the best nighttime spectacular. No. If you really want to see fireworks, if you want to grab a drink or a treat and watch the fireworks, absolutely should do it. It's a beautiful it. show. Um, but for us, attractions are more important tonight. Yeah. And that means right Guardians twice. That's right. So, uh, join us on the final one. Let's go. Well, you'll never guess what we're doing. You'll never guess. Going back to Space to Birth to look for, uh, Quincy's water bottle. Super out of character for me to have left something behind, but I did do it. I know it's <laughs> weird, and hopefully it's still there. Oh, still there. Uh, we're pretty sure we know where it is, uh, but we did hop out of line. They said it was okay. 
we'll go back when we find the uh, water bottle. If something goes wrong like that and you are in a position where you just stand in your guardian's light, they aren't so cute for some reason. Um, you can always talk to passengers and let them know the situation. Know what you know the best way to proceed so that you can do what's best for you. All right, well, where is it? So, <laughs> the water bottle uh, is not found. <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? <laughs> We, we talked to all the cast members we can. They said they're going to look for it. It's either on Spaceship Earth or somewhere in Journey, Journey we're gonna of Moana. After the ride. But we're going to go back to our ride to see what happens. I'm going to go get on the ride. I'm going to go back and check in Spaceship Earth again. And then I'm going to check with guest services. And if it's not there, it's not there. Sometimes you lose things on your vacation. It can be a big bummer. But in the end, it's just stuff. And this is time with your loved ones. And. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. Like, if, if you just lose, like, it can really suck to lose something, but, like, I don't think you should let it ruin a night unless it's, like, your passport. Oh, then right. You can let it ruin your night. <laughs> The bad news is the curse of Disco Inferno lives on. We definitely on. have it. One of us are not going to have Disco Inferno because we got it again. Oh, oh my gosh. Has it been a perfect day? Yeah, it's been a perfect day. Yeah. Has it been a perfect day? I think so. Yeah, what do you guys think? Has it been a perfect day? Let us know. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch us do a murder mystery in Disney World. Yeah. See you there. Bye. Hey, uh, other, other bad news. I, I did not look where we parked the car. Me neither. <laughs> I, guess. I lost my water bottle, you lost your car. And we lost our sanity. Yeah. Good night. Good night.